All right, I had a question asked on my YouTube channel about how I make or how I have this custom menu pop up when I'm working on stuff. So I can hit this button. It's like a Maya marking menu and actually it has some menus in here that I can go through and depending on what I want to work on, it's always at the tip of my finger. So as I'm going in here and modeling and stuff, I can hit this button and everything I need access to is right here. Uh, what that is, it's not a Maya marking menu, but it is similar to that in that it's a custom menu that I can assign a hotkey to. And then as I hit that hotkey on my screen, it's just wherever my brush is and I have access to all that. Just like when you hit space bar uh, and that kind of stuff. So how do you do that? Where you're going to start is over here in the preferences folder and you're going to go to config enable customize. Now you're going to see when I hit this enable customize button, you're going to see the screen changed a little bit. Um, that's going to allow us to stick some stuff up here if you want, some stuff down here, as well as you're going to want to go to custom UI and you're going to see here's all your menu options. So the first thing I'm going to do is click create new menu and we'll just go ahead and call this test stuff. And that's going to throw test stuff right here. Now as soon as I click on this, it's going to move it over here to where it goes QRST. So it's alphabetical order. So as soon as you touch it, just realize it's going to flip over to where test stuff's going to go. Uh, in order to put stuff in here, what I'm going to do is go ahead and take this little docking circle right here and just drag it over here so I have access to it. And I'm going to start dragging stuff in there. Uh, super easy to do. If I want to organize in here a little bit, what I can do is go down here to custom sub palette, hold down control alt, and just drag that right onto test stuff. And that'll give me a new sub palette. Now I want to drag something in there. So what I have in mind is some Z-Sphere stuff up here at top. So when I'm doing like Z-Sphere retopology, I don't have to go all over this menu. And that's the whole point of this doing this custom menu is, uh, well, let me just show you. Uh, for example, I'm going to go ahead and switch to a Z-Sphere here. And the reason I'm switching to a Z-Sphere is so I have access to things like adaptive skin, Z-sketching, rigging, topology, all this stuff. Because if I don't have a Z-sphere selected, these menus don't exist. So go ahead and draw out a Z-sphere. It'll give you access to these menus. And now I can start doing stuff that I'm going to use for retopology, which would be stuff like, uh, we'll go ahead and do edit topology. So again, I'm going to hold down control alt and just drag edit topology over to this untitled. It's untitled for now. Uh, as well as, what else do I use? Skin thickness I use, uh, density, I do a lot. I always change it back to one and uh, delete topology. Let's go ahead and throw that in there. So these are all the things I use generally when I'm doing uh, retopology stuff. And now I don't have to go over here to three different menus just to do Z-Sphere stuff. Uh, speaking of, let's go ahead and control alt tap this untitled and let's go ahead and call this Z-Sphere stuff. So now we have a new menu. So now when I go over here and I go to my test stuff menu, you're going to see I have access to all these things all in one spot. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and throw a sub, another sub menu in there. So I'm going to go here to custom sub palette, hold down control alt, drag that onto test stuff, and it's going to throw a new sub menu down here. Now in this, let's say we want to do something like put brushes in here. The problem is if you go here, uh, let's go ahead and go, let's go out of the Z sphere here and let's just grab a poly cylinder, make sure it's a poly mesh 3D. And so if you go here, and we go to our brush menu, you can't pull brushes out of this menu. You can pull this thing in here, but what that's going to do is give you access to this big brush selection, which I don't want. I want specific brushes to be thrown in there. So how do I find those? I'm going to go ahead and close this preferences just by clicking this dot. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush menu. And if you want to, you can just go through here and just start clicking brushes that you're going to use all the time. Or if you, I mean, I have hotkeys for my as well go like standard, clay, trim, H polish. And as I'm using those, you're going to see they're going to start stacking up in here. So these are the ones you want to drag into your custom menu. So what I'm going to do is hold down control alt. Now I'll throw clay in there and I'll throw machine parts, whatever you want to throw in there. So that's how you have access to those. As well as if you want to do materials, I don't want every, I want access to every material in here because I have it right, the button right here, but I do want specific materials down there. So just like I did, I'm going to go over here to materials drag that over here. And then as I go through here and select materials that I want to be custom, as I'm selecting them, they're, th they're populating up over here and I can hold down control alt. Now I can drag in matcap gray, matcap pearl, or whatever I want to use. Same thing for stroke. I don't want to do stroke. I can go over here to stroke and just start using different strokes and getting, grabbing these small ones and throwing it in there. As well as it, not just these custom menus, what you can do is you can actually, you know how you're interface change when we turn on customize, you can go ahead and start throwing in, let's go ahead and bring our material back. You can go ahead and start throwing these things around here. So if I want red wax down here, I can throw it in here. I can throw it up here. I can go to my stroke menu. Let's go ahead and open this thing. I can 
put spray down here, I can put drag dot up here, so you can just go ahead and start moving and matching things you don't want. If you mess up, go ahead and hold down control alt, just drag it to your screen, and that'll go ahead and get rid of anything you don't want, as well as if you don't want these things, just go ahead and drag them back out, holding control alt. Also, uh, another thing I don't like to do, or I don't like going all over my menu for, is something like uh, deformation mirror, as well as geometry, modify topology, mirror and weld. I use mirror, mirror and weld right next to each other all the time, and it's something I don't want to necessarily assign a hotkey for. So what I can do is just go to mirror, drag that into my untitled, and then I can go to mirror and weld. I see, you know, you, start, you know, you go up to all these menus, you start opening them, you start going blind. But if I know I just need mirror, mirror and weld together all the time, I can just drag them in here. And if I want these to be above, I can just drag them above here, no problem. Another thing I do a lot that is that I have to go to a bunch of different menus for is uh, subtool, split. I do split hidden because when I do an insert mesh brush, let's go B I, I insert cylinder. So I insert a cylinder that goes ahead and masks this off, and I want to split this off. One way you can do that is going to split and then just split on the mass point. So you can go ahead and if you want to do that, you can throw that in there, or you can just assign that to a hockey. However, what I do a lot of times is I want to do split uh, points that are masked, or hide points that are masked, because I use that for organization sometimes. So where that is, is under visibility, hide point. So I want to hide stuff sometimes, and as well as when they're hidden, even if I am not, don't have anything masked, sometimes I like to just split hidden. So that's something I want to do. So instead of you know going here to visibility, going back up here to subtool, going to split, and then trying to find split hidden, and getting a headache doing that, I can put hide point split hidden right next to each other, and they're always going to be there. So, uh, let's go ahead and throw some more things in there to kind of jumble it up a little bit. Let's go ahead and do Z Remesher. Let's go ahead and throw a Z Remesher button in there. And let's go ahead and do, you want to do Keep Groups. And this is starting to get unorganized, so I'm going to have to go back and organize this. But we'll go ahead and do Adaptive Size, why not? And uh, let's see how this does. So we're going to go to Split Hidden and Hide Point. I want to be Keep Together. And now I've got kind of this weird space in here. Luckily, if you want to keep things kind of organized, you can go ahead and fill up these spaces with these little orange spacers in here, as well as you can actually drop these in here too. If you don't want to do another submenu, which you can, you can actually put in a custom sub palette under the submenu and have stacked menus in here. You can also put these spacers in here to kind of give your eye a little bit of a break. So that's something you can do as well. And when you're finally done with all this stuff and you've got your menu all set up, then always remember as you're working and you, you actually start using you know, maybe you start, because you have access to these things, you're not having to hunt and peck over here all day long. Uh, you might start using this stuff a little bit more. So as you start using this stuff, always be cognizant of you. If you're doing this stuff all the time, go ahead and put it in your custom menu, put it in a sub menu, keep it organized, give it a new hotkey for another sub custom menu, and that'll keep you from hunting and pecking over here all day. Uh, so once you've done all your hunting and pecking and you've organized your stuff and you keep adding to it as you go, what you can do is go ahead and make this kind of like a uh, marking menu or I'll just assign this to a hotkey. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and turn off Enable Customize and you're going to see my screen goes back to normal and the orange buttons are gone and now I've got a test stuff uh, menu here. So I'm going to close that and it's over here under my test stuff. So now if I want to assign this to a hotkey, it's just like assigning any other hotkey. I hold now with Customize Off, I turn, I hold uh, Control Alt, tap Test Stuff and I'll just do Alt P. Uh, for my custom hotkey. So now as I'm modeling, all I have to do is hit Alt-P. Let me go ahead and get my hands over the keys here. Uh, so Alt-P, anywhere I am on the screen, and it'll just pop up where I need it. And just like anything else, I can hold down Shift and close these things and open these things, and that'll keep them closed or open depending on what I want. And it looks like I forgot to name this, so all I would have to do is go over here to Preferences, go ahead and enable Customize again, go to my test stuff, Drag this over here, hold down Control alt click Untitled, go ahead and name it, turn off the name of Customize, and I'm good to go. And you might be wondering, well, where did all my Z-Sphere stuff go? The reason why no Z-Sphere stuff is here is because you don't have a Z-Sphere activated on as editable on your screen. So, of course, as I go through here, grab a Z-Sphere, and uh, let's go ahead and append a cube, I guess. And with our Z-Sphere selected, I'm going to hit X. Transparent, and we'll move this down, Alt-A. So now what I can do is, well, let's go ahead and do Alt-P. So now I have my Z-Sphere stuff here, and you're going to see, when I do Alt-P, 
all my zsphere stuff is all of a sudden showing because I have a zsphere selected, so it's it's actually editable. So now I can go in here and do you know edit topology, change my density to one, and start retopologizing right now. And in fact, I can go down here to Matcap Pearl, change this to a darker value, and then start retopologizing however I want super quickly. Now once I'm done with that, I can go in here, change my skin thickness, hit A to preview my adaptive skin, go into solo mode, and you can start doing zsphere stuff very very quickly. Uh, instead of you know going down here to your, all these menus down here. So that's how you do a custom menu with submenus and kind of treating it like a hotkey so you're not constantly hunting and pecking over here on the side. And I realize I just uh, forgot a very important thing. Once you've done all of that work, you're, you're going to want to go to Preferences, Config, and go ahead and hit Store Config. Now the cool thing about this is as you install new versions of ZBrush, these configurations actually stay the same. So your hotkeys and your and your custom menus will, won't change uh, because they're stored. Uh, users public public document ZBrush data. This is where your configs are stored. So as you install new versions of ZBrush that end up on your C drive on your program files, uh, your con your stored configs will stay the same. So after you've done all your custom menu stuff, make sure you go to Preferences and Store Config.